Welcome back to Boxing with TT. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who watched the channel, supports the channel, and watches me grow. I appreciate it uh, very much. My baby is up. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my baby is up. I decided to start my chin off first already because when I try to talk and do my chin, it, it sounds like a remote. So, yeah, that's why this is already done. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about Mr. Um, Tom Maylox. And Mr. Tom Maylox is a prime definition of just because you come from somewhere, it doesn't mean you can make it out of it, okay? He is born March 23rd, 1784. And he is born into slavery, okay? And um, in Virginia, in USA, on a tobacco plantation. His dad name is Zachary, and Zachary also was a fighter, and he fought in 1776 in the American Revolution. So he is known to come from a background of fighters, okay? Zach's dad has four other sons, amongst with Tom, and um, at the age of 14, dad's, dad passes, a, well, at the age of 14 that is when Tom loses dad and now Tom has to pick up the responsibility of what the other kids probably can't do and it is in 1801 at the age of 17 when the owner of another plantation comes to Tom's um, owner and says I can take on your my people can take on your people and he's like, absolutely, you can't. And uh, Tom's people is like, yeah, I'm going to put Tom in on you guys. How about that? And he's like, okay, let's do it. But if you lose, if your guy loses, your plantation belongs to me along with your slaves. And Tom's slave owner is like, absolutely the freak not. What's happening, honey bun? Told you my baby up. <laughs> And he's like, absolutely the freak not. You you won't get my plantation or my workers. You're, you're bugging some. So this is when they put Tom into training. And I'm going to be honest with you. Tom is not serious about this at all, guys. Tom is like, you think I'm going to sit here and fight for you to remain on a plantation? Absolutely not. You're bugging some. And they put him in training. And he's not beat, like I said. And then he gets beaten because the trainer thinks that Tom isn't taking it serious enough. And after this beating, Tom is promised $500 in his freedom. Tom is like, Shh. yeah, I'll take it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Give me my freedom and my $500 so I could be out of this place and never see you guys ever again. And Tom beats the brakes off Abel. Abe. Yeah, Abe. He beats the brakes off him. He puts the pound game on this man, okay? And baby... <laughs> Mr. Maylox is off to sweet freedom, okay? Now, in 1804, Tom is now living in New York where he becomes a professional boxer. And yes, this is still very much illegal, but this is what pretty much everybody is doing to make a name for itself and to put bread on the table. Um, And he is unstoppable, okay? He is not to be played with. He plays no games. He is beating everyone who comes his way. And now he is becoming a prize fighter. He is winning money, okay? He is not he is not sucking a job rent at all. He is playing for keeps at this time, okay? And he decides, well, since I am the champion of America, because yeah, he's defeating everybody in and that's coming in his in his foundation. And he's like, I do not own copyrights to Sesame Street. <laughs> My son is woke once again. Um, but yeah, he decides 
I'm want England. I want London. I want to go far. <clears throat> I'm going. I'm going because I want to be more than just a fighter in New York. Because once again, in order for you to be somebody and fighting wise, you did ha have to go to London to put to get that certified approval. Like that was pretty much it. Like it was if you can go out there, you can go anywhere and you can make it do what it do. Okay. And that's exactly what this young man wanted to do. And and that's exactly what he did. He goes to Linden, standing at 5'9", 196 pounds. Um, um, he goes to Linden and his first opponent is Tom Blake. How he gets to Linden is he settles on a three-day journey on a boat. Now, how in the world did he be able to capitalize, capitalize people with going there, being that he's black? I have no idea. That just lets me know that, baby, he got the gift of God. He ran his mouth and got them people to let him get on the board with other people as well. You know, shutting up. So he knew how to talk his he knew what to say and how to say it. He wasn't a dumb he wasn't your dumb a dumb slave at all. And now he's free, so he's not dumb at all. Point period. And Crib is um I'm sorry, Maylox is fighting Tom Blake. Tom Blake gets destroyed. And um when he gets destroyed, this happens in London. And Crib is retired, okay? Mind you, Crib is retired. Crib hasn't boxed because there's pretty much nobody else to box him. He has put the pound game on people as well. Nobody wants to fight him. You know, he's pretty much earned his, his certification of the champ, of champs. And um, Madox is, is, like I said, he defeats Tom Blake and Crib isn't... You know, Crib is like, okay, I need a victim, and sir, you will be my next victim. And Tom is like, okay, <laughs> we'll see about that. And um, they get into training, and he trains, but he loves the woman as well. So it's like, eh, complex. It's like, from what I was seeing and reading, he actually met um this actually this proposal happened because of Bob um Bob Breeson and Bill Richmond. Bill Richmond is a former slave as well. And they're just sitting there looking at him like mm, whatever. He spends his money on booze and chicks and clothes. But you have to understand where he comes from. Well, Bill should understand where he comes from because he is as he is as well a former slave. So don't do him, sir, because you came from the same background as him. So you should already know what's up. Like my personal opinion. But he um no, nah, he doesn't see it that way. Not a little bit. Not even a tiny fraction of it. He doesn't see it at all. He's like <laughs> what? Yes, he did. He didn't see him like that at all, stinky butt. So he um then decides that the first opponent will be actually, um, he's going to fight, sorry guys, he's going to fight July, I don't know how you write this here, he's going to fight July 24th, 1810, to a gentleman by the name of Jack Burroughs, and this is going to be a 65 minute match, and he's going to win. Because that's just what he's going to do. And that's exactly what he does. He wins. And after this win, he goes on to fight Tom Blake or Tom Tough. Yeah. He was tough, all right. Because he stood no match for Mr. Melox. Whatsoever. And then, he, in the eighth round, he gives him a KO. Okay? So, once again, yeah, he's tough, all right. <laughs> Whatever. He then, um, th the match for Tom Crib actually does start to, to progress, okay? And when it starts 
to formate their getting ready. Okay. And he injures um, Melox. And Melox loses. But the thing about it is, is that it held a lot of controversy in the 27th round. Only because um, Crib did fail to re-enter in the circle ring in 30 seconds. Now, for the beginning people, they you guys know that there is a 30 second round. You have to enter back into the ring within 30 seconds. This did not happen with Crib. And so now, um, this is controversial. But... Two days later, Bill Richman, who is only using him for the money, decides to take him to an area. And this area gives him the recognition that he needs and that he wants. It is also basically saying, yeah, you're the theater. Because they give Mr. Maylox 45 Guinnesses and they give him an ovation of, of his work, okay? So, obviously... The crowd, the people, they knew what it was. And Maylox doesn't stop there, you know. He continues on doing what he's doing. So, in May uh, 21st, um, 1811, Maylox fights a 22-year-old by the name of William Rimmer. And he wins within the 21st round. It doesn't have any connection, baby. You have to wait, Okay. Okay, so he um he wins the match as well, and then he has another match, but it's against Tom Cribs again. Okay, and once again, controversial. They said that um he slipped on something, and oh no 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 no, this one was not controversial. This one was just an actual loss. You feel me? And um, he beat him um, in September 28th, 1811. And he did so. Yeah. In the, yes, he did in the 11th round. Um, but then with the KO, okay? So this was the, actually the first time that he did officially on record or on, on Skype win with um, – time because they're like the first time no sir you did not win Melox beat you this time okay he beat you whatever <laughs> Richmond is is no longer managing Melox because like I said um he, he just was he didn't see nothing special in him nobody saw nothing special in um in Melox when he got to London all his love came from the United States you know what I'm saying so it all came from New York and who he dabbled with in New York wherever they came from but in London, he was like freaking nobody. So, with this KO and this uh, 11th round and his jar broke, and Richmond is like, yeah, just like I thought, <laughs> you're no one special, sir. And Maylox continues on pushing, okay? He is not a quitter at all. He decides to continue on pushing, and then he decides to um, continue on fighting May 21st in 1811. And, and I'm sorry, sorry guys. Maylox fights three, well four, um, other people, and he only loses to three of them. So that shows you what type of guy he is. He only loses to three people, and um, in April 23, uh, April 2nd, 1813, Maylox defeats Jack Carter at a 25th round. When he defeats when he defeats him in his twenty um round twenty fifth round, he then goes on to defeat some giant named Aber Deaton. The show doesn't like I said the show just does not stop with this man. The only person it seems as, as though he cannot beat is Tom, and I can't even say that because like I said everybody else gave him they props so shit, and maybe he could beat him. Um, and May 27th, 1814, he is now fighting William Fuller. Four rounds go, and then the police is like, whoop, 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 whoop. What are you doing? Hot. <laughs> go home. Get out of here. Go home. This match is over. And that's what happens. But they do set a rematch. 
May 31st, 1814. And it rounds it lasts for two rounds and it is a 68 minute match and Maylox defeats him again. Okay, he defeats him as well, I should say. March 11th, 1815, Maylox versus George Cooper. This match he does lose. And this would be Maylock's last in-ring match. But he still shows off his skills and his spunk and his talent by sparring. In 1877, he is now reported to be in the northern part of the island. Okay? He goes to prison for... Um, he goes to prison for not paying off his debts. And when he goes to prison for not paying off his debts, because once again, he was broke, but he was already broke before he even got, listen, this man took the money that he had and left New York and to better himself. And I don't know, in New York, he was getting um the, the, the money that he deserved. He was a prize fighter, but I'm not sure if he was getting money and lending the same way. You understand what I'm saying? So, and then the money that he did have, oh, he went broke because he bought clothes and he was spending it on chicks and booze. You have to understand where this man came from. This man literally came from the slums. He was a freaking slave that made his, he is the definition of self-made. It doesn't matter to me if he went broke if he went out broke or if what happened with what he did with his money, what did, I don't know what did they expect. Like, I don't know what did they expect. Um, he probably was still sending money to his freaking family. Nobody really knows what he did with his money. They just think it as, oh, he spent his money on clothes, he spent his money on, well, look where he came from. If I came from that background, I probably would be spending my money on booze and Close to not on guys because we don't let them hold okay but i probably be doing the same exact thing so i'm not i'm not mad at him at all not one freaking bit i'm not mad at him i'm not mad at him i'm not mad at him and then you have to think about it bill probably didn't believe in him because maybe he was taking something from bill that bill probably wanted maybe bill because once again bill is a former sleep as well so who knows what hostility Bill actually really played in the key part of not still wanting to manage him. Like, was you mad because it didn't get up to the hype that you thought it was going to go up to? Or you didn't do what this young man set out to do? Yeah, you was free as well. So why are you, I don't see nothing special in him. I don't really care for him, but I'm going to use him for money. Uh, what, what, what the heck ever, okay? What the heck ever whatever um so the, being that he couldn't pay debt he got locked up and when he gets locked up this is when he gets tuberculosis okay and when he gets tuberculosis he turns into alcohol this was probably a really sad um down point in his life for him he probably felt as though he deserved it to be champ, and he should have been on top of the world, and he wasn't recognized for what he had accomplished coming from where he's coming from. So, d depression, hello, let's talk about it. Let's just talk about it. He sadly passes away in a, um, a band room um, at the age of 34, August 4th, 1818. Um, that's no kids information and, and no wife, anything, just a dream to get the hell out of slavery. And if anyone is mad at that, then you need a reality check. Okay. Um, but he does have a legacy behind him. You know, everything is not all bad. I, I didn't, you know, whatever. He um is supposedly supposedly he is supposed to be the a direct ancestor to the legend of El Coche, honey. That's what they say now. I don't know if it's true, but that's what they say. That's what the streets say. The streets say the LL. That's he can the LL. LL is hard as yeah. He that's Ken folk. Okay, they have a portrait of him 
in the National Portrait. Uh-oh, I'm about to mess it up again. They have a portrait of him in the National Portrait um, Gallery in London, as we speak. He has books based on him. He has a play, a play that's based on him in Crib in 2014. In 1997, he is um, inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. In 2010, he is induction, inducted into the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame. And he is also known, honey, as one of the five hardest hitting men. <laughs> I don't want no smoke. Yep, he is known as number five. So that says a whole lot about his character and what they thought of him. Um, <clears throat> and he is. He is considered to be the pioneer. And he is still considered to be the first. The first black international boxer superstar and they give him this because like i said he traveled he he wasn't just fighting in america he decided that he wanted to go to london and and, and pursue his career and i ain't mad at mr madox at all i don't care if he was an alcoholic i don't care if he liked it the girls i don't well he was supposed to i don't care what he did he made it do what it do for the time of his lifespan okay and um i felt as though that it was a lot of bull crap that took place behind the scenes Tom Crib, you was dead wrong, you was dead wrong, you was dead freaking wrong. If you knew that your behind did not get up for that 30 count, maybe you were supposed to get that up to that man and give him his respect too. But the thing that I did appreciate about doing my background on him, my back research on him, was that the company, the community realized what really happened because they gave him some coins. What they give him coins for if they didn't know what was up? You feel me? They gave him coins. And they still turned around and gave him a standing ovation. So that lets you know that the people, he was the champ's people. He just didn't have that title on, on, on his arm, which was still messed up. Messed up. Just all messed up about that right there. Just edit me out. Um, no, 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 you don't got to stop. I'm, two seconds. I'm going to put him in his chair because D not here. And I'm okay. Gonna I'm almost finished anyway. So, um... Yeah, that's that's that right there. And that's how I feel about it. And I don't care what nobody got to say. <laughs> I don't care. They, 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 they jipped them. I said it. I, Bill, you was a hater. Tom, you was a hater. But like I said, I ain't mad at Bill. Bill was only in it for the money. But as you knowing what that, what that come from. And I think that they should have just did a little bit more better with him. Like, I think that was kind of whack. Like, you ain't have to treat him like that because you didn't, because you didn't like him or how you felt about him. Like, evidently, if he was ringing bells in, in, um, in the city, then that right there should have told you what that man was about right there. And I'm pretty sure that they got word out there. Um, yeah, it's just messed up how they treat certain people, like. Especially back then. Because of the color of the skin. Like. We don't choose what color our parents is. We just. You know. We're born and we deal with it. And we try to make the best out of it. So for you to come at home crazy. Or people to come at other people crazy. Because of the color of their skin. Like. Who the heck died. And it made you God. Like. God made us all shapes, all colors, all sizes, all different kind of people for a reason. And it was to be accepted. So, who the heck is you to, oh, he looks like he's a nobody. First of all, we are in a bar, sir. Of course, I'm going to drink. Of course, you're going to see me with drinks and, and, and chicks surrounded by me. But you don't know the twerk that I've been put in to get here. And I think that's why they did what they did. They were scared. Shut up. No, I'm not. They were scared of him being an African American first champion. That's what I think it was right there. In New York, that was cool because it was all type of different backgrounds. Nobody really, it wasn't, you know, 
frowned upon to be a, a, a African American champion. But in in England, you were still a boy. Period. Pooh. You were still a boy. And in in any eyes, even if you did come from slavery, even if you did win uh win your freedom from boxing out of it, in their eyes you still was a boy. And that's just a hard truth. And to this day, it's not stated, but we are still them people. I'm not going to say the word, but we are still those people in those people in other people's eyes. We still don't belong. It doesn't matter what we did, what we do, how far we came. You know, the first thing they see, they look at us is they were they're that. Oh my god, they're coming. They're powerful. They can do what they want to do. You can't have that, so you have to go. With that being said, I have to get back to my child, honey. I hope y'all liked my video. I hope you liked the makeup. I hope you liked the lesson that was brought in this message. And have yourself a good day, and I will see y'all soon. Peace out.